Okay, hello and welcome to the stock specific class here for Thursday, March the 31st, last day of March. If you have any questions uh, during the week uh, or any questions I don't get to in the live class here, uh, make sure you send those to jerry at traderspro.com. All right, let's take a look at, uh, uh, start off with the direction alerts here. Uh, the, we, you know, as the market has kind of moved a little bit higher, well, it's pulled back uh, a little bit today. We'll look at that here. But um, uh, overall, as it's moved higher, you can see momentum is in that extreme range here. It's still not past the halfway point. You know, if it starts to get over here on the right side of that extreme reversal risk, uh, you, that's where you start to get a little bit um, uh, concerned that uh it's getting it's it's getting too overbought or too extreme um just a second here Um, okay, hold on. Sorry about this. The breadth indicator. Now, this is what we talked about on Tuesday was that breadth was lagging a little bit, and it's still lagging, and so um, that is a little bit of a concern. Uh, what, I, what I when I told you uh, that on Tuesday, the concern is that if if the if, that there's fewer stocks that are causing the market to rally when you don't see the strong breadth there. It means that um, that there's not a lot of participation now. In a nice, healthy trend, you'd like to see a lot of participation. It's never going to always line up perfectly. You're never going to see the breadth and the momentum indicators in the exact spot. But um, you like to see. Uh, it, this is what we're looking at here. Is we're looking at the participation in the rally, and there still isn't that full participation. And that's actually you can see that if you go look at a lot of charts, particularly the. A lot of small cap stocks have not really uh, participated much, a little bit in the rally. They bounced a little bit, but uh, uh, that makes sense because we're still operating in a, in a tightening environment. Um, some of the riskier companies, smaller companies that thrived, uh, you know, when we had zero interest rates uh, the last couple of years uh, in a tightening mar uh, type of <clears throat> condition, uh, they're they're not going to attract as much uh, investment. They're going to be riskier to to, to uh, uh, trade, um, and so you would expect them to lag a little bit. Um, but if things start to really, if the trend really starts to take off, uh, you, you'd like to see those stocks uh, participate. That's another reason why we look at the Russell 2000 index too, is to is to kind of see that as well. And when we pull up that chart. Again, that chart will show you exactly what we're looking at here. It'll, it'll show you that it's it's lagging the other index a little bit. I actually showed you that on Tuesday, if you remember, um, but I'll I'll kind of remind you of it today or show it to you again today that uh, where you can see that it's lagged a little bit. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on to see if that starts to catch up a little bit. And then obviously sentiment is high. It's been it it really hasn't dropped much uh, even when we had some of the selling earlier uh, in the month. Um, uh, it or actually last month uh, it it hasn't really dropped that much so um, but we, we're going to keep an eye on it because if it starts to get uh, you know, further into this extreme range it could indicate you're getting near a top but nothing nothing is showing us yet that we we have to be concerned of a major top uh, taking place um, and um, you know we have had a pretty strong run over the last uh, couple weeks uh, we're probably going to end up uh, correcting that a little bit or consolidating that a little bit. Um, and, and like I show you that here, we go to the charts. Let's take, pull up the indexes here. So we're down a little bit today. Hold on. There we go. Well, we're down a little bit yesterday. We're down a little bit today. Um, you know, I, I just don't, there's not one thing I told you to look for if we start to pull back. As I said, you, you want to see if we start to see 
Um, is it pulling back in a very sharp, big, are we getting a big drop on very high volume, things like that? Um, you know, yesterday we came off the lows of the day a little bit, uh, going into the close. Today we're, we're lower, but we're, we're a very compact trading range right here. This is not showing any sort of uh, panic in the selling. It's showing more of a just taking profits off the table. Uh, which is the type of selling you'd, you'd want to see within the within an uptrend, um, and so now we could we could pull back a little bit further. We could move a little bit more sideways, back and forth for a few days. Um, we could just on on you know people have been waiting to buy into this trend. That one thing I'll be looking at is there's there's the people that have been waiting to get into this trend. Uh, afraid to kind of buy in as it's as it's uh, gone up every day to wait for a pullback. Now you've got a two day pullback. That might be enough for some that they jump right back in and it takes off again. So, um, you know, that I haven't ruled that out either, but uh, nothing in the pullback so far is, is looking panicky. Um, again, that can change very quickly, but um, I'm just saying based on what I see so far. Now, uh, one thing that, that we do want to keep an eye on though, is that we did break out, I pointed this out on Tuesday that we broke, we were breaking out above that. Um, this was at January 10th low on that reversal. This was the February 2nd, February 9th, where it acted as resistance. We broke out above that, and and now actually we're down a little bit. Eh, maybe we're right at it now. This is not a real straight line, and I don't really look at exactness on these lines either. You know, you, you kind of look at it is in the in the same area there, but. Uh, this is something to kind of keep an eye on that, um, and it could be a reason that maybe at the end of the day, especially if we rally into the close, it could be a, a reason why the market just starts taking off again from here. Uh, you also have a dynamic that uh, can sometimes come into play where you're at the end of the month. Uh, there are sometimes, usually you see this more at the at the end of a quarter, um, which uh, we are at the end of the, of the, of the first quarter here today. Um, uh, and there are big fund managers that, uh, you know, they, they get, they send out quarterly reports to, um, their investors or the people are money managing their money, uh, or people whose money they're managing. And, um, and so they're, they call it window dressing where they, you know, they'll tend to, to, you know, buy stocks that uh, that they think that their investors want to own or or have them what they want to see those in the portfolio the ones they're hearing about all day long on tv and things like that um and so sometimes they'll sell out of some stocks and buy other stocks the buying and selling may not have anything to do with what they're expecting over the next several months but what they're what they're they need to show on their quarterly reports and so um you can sometimes see you don't want to you don't always want to um, uh, look at the last day of a, of a month or last day of a quarter as as the direction the market is is going to be heading in, because it could be just something that has nothing to do with the, the future. It could just be based on something right now. We see this happen sometimes on option expiration um, days, uh, particularly the, the monthly op, the, the third Friday in, in, of the month, where most of the, the regular monthly options expire. There can be buying and selling that takes place that day that has nothing to do with the future. It has everything to do with that option expiration. Um, and so uh, what can happen is, as you can see, boy, it's dropping on heavy volume. This must mean the market's going to go down, and that's not true. It just means that uh, there, there could be some just repositioning taking place, and it's causing a lot of volume, and it's causing a drop but that could be reversed to the very next day as, as things take off again. So just be aware of that. Um, uh, we don't want to, we don't want to start drawing and, and it's too early here to tell whether this is just a, a little pullback. We're going to take off uh, further or somehow it starts to accelerate to the downside. Maybe, maybe we do start off the month um, of April and, and start selling off in a big way, but um, I don't, I don't see that happening. We do have the, uh, uh, earnings that will be start coming out again later in the month, and um, uh, the market can start reacting more to those those earnings reports. So uh, now we are we we had kind of gotten into that extreme reversal risk range over the last couple of days. We pulled back a little bit. 
the buy range, but that's something to keep an eye on as well as if we do surge forward again, do we start to get towards that right side of that extreme reversal risk? Again, usually I'll, I'll look at the middle and do we start to get to the right side of the, the, the middle of that, that range there? That tells you you're getting a little bit extended. But so far, everything looks like we should be continuing to move higher. And so that would be my expectation. <clears throat> um, there's a question here. Um, if, if you're using the, the, I've talked about this a few times. Um, it's a little bit off. It's a question about the using the signals. The, the, it, the, when you're, when you're trying to develop a simplistic approach, a signal approach, um, you develop an algorithm that, uh, when you have all the, 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 the number showing that the stock has a high probability of going up, it'll give you the buy signal. When it shows that there's a high probability that the stock is, is going down, it'll give you a sell signal. And then obviously in the middle there is the hold signal. Um, those algorithms are designed to try to simplify the whole process. And, uh, and the simple way to do it is you buy on the buy signal, sell on the sell signal. And it, there are some other techniques related to that that are in some of those trainings you can, you can do on the, on the YouTube channel. But there, there are better ways to manage your trade if you know, if you know how to read a chart, you know how to read price action, you know how to, you know, different entry techniques, different stop loss techniques, different uh, exit strategies. You can get better results, a lot better results, if you know how to trade. Okay, so again, the software is designed for those that, that want to simplify it. They don't want to take any time to learn how to trade. They just want the software to tell them what to do and to be able to get results, obviously, to kind of just automate the whole process. Um, and and, uh, and that that's how you would do it. You would go about it that way. Um, can you can you modify it yourself? Can you get out? Can you buy on a buy signal and if it goes back to a hold signal? Can you get get out? Absolutely. I mean, there's millions of ways you can manage a trade. Um, it, you know, it, it, the, the 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 what you want to try to do though is to is to try to um, follow a process, especially early on as you're as you're trying to learn. Make sure you're following a process uh, that you can repeat and that works. And and um, and but the, the the live classes here are designed to teach you different techniques, teach you how to trade, teach you how to recognize uh, stair steps and chart patterns and breakouts and uh, uh, candlestick formations, so that you can uh, implement those into your trading and 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 get better results out of your trading because you know what you're doing. So I, I usually just assume that anyone that's that's going through these classes, whether in the live classes or they're viewing the recordings. I assume that they are um, uh, doing so to because they want to become a better trader, and so that's why uh, that's why you don't see me coming on here and just all, just focusing on the signals. And, and we part of that is we have recordings that do go over that whole process. If you just want to keep it simple and, and trade the signals, how do you do it? Um, there's already those trainings available to be able to, to do that, and you really don't need me to tell you how to do that. Um, so I try to take a different approach in these, these weekly classes to try to teach you things that, and teach, and teach you things that pop up that I might not include in a course because they're minor or small or, um, but they're happening right now. And I can, I can show you what's happening. I can teach you uh, how to, how to read that or how to deal with that. So that's kind of the purpose of, of doing these live classes. Hopefully that answered your, your question there a little bit. Um, if not, make sure you email me and I can uh, clarify that a little bit to you. All right. So the other, oh, I wanted to show you the, because uh, the Dow and NASDAQ are pretty much the same, still looking at kind of the same thing there. Uh, Russell 2000 on, on Tuesday, we talked about how it was breaking out of that, um, that long-term support resistance area kind of right through here. 
again, this extends out for the last year, year and a half now, I guess. Uh, and we broke out above it. But we came right back below it yesterday, and then we're still below it to, uh, today. Uh, that's something to keep an eye on. Um, it, 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 it's interesting because it corresponds to the S&P breaking out of that key resistance area, kind of that last key resistance area that we've been watching for uh, several weeks now. And um, so both these indexes broke out above key resistance areas and then came right back down again. So we'll see if that ends up being a false breakout, if, if uh, maybe this turns in a little bit bigger correction. And like I said, I'm not seeing that just yet. Although yesterday's move was a pretty big reversal. It, it was a, a lot stronger bearish candle than what we were seeing on the on the S&P and, and the other indexes. Now, I, I was talking earlier about how the Russell was, the small cats have been lagging the other indexes. Again, if you watch this run up right here, you notice there's this right here in the middle, we had a, a couple weeks where we just, or about a week and a half where we just moved sideways, okay? That's not what we saw, particularly on the NASDAQ. We'll go back here to the Qs. You don't see that here. You went straight up. So so those small caps were lagging a little bit, uh, kind of right in this middle area right through here. And um, and that is a reflection of that market breadth, that uh, there weren't as many stocks that were participating in that, in, in that in, particularly in the later part of that rally. Um, now, we have seen a little bit better participation in, in the small caps. Uh, what we did, particularly on Tuesday, because the move on on uh, Tuesday, that breakout was a really strong. It, this was a the the Russell had a bigger percentage move that day. Um, now it followed it up with a bigger percentage move down the next day, yesterday. Uh, so that um, again, that's kind of that whip sign that can take place sometimes. It can get real frustrating. Um, but we we need to keep an eye on that. Um, it's, if we can get back above that that key resistance area again, um, that's a good bullish sign as well. That's something to look for over the next few days as we get back above there. And it will, I, I assume it will, if if buyers are jumping back in immediately after this little pullback. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes you can move sideways for a little bit of time, and it's possible we do that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we'll get earnings coming out a little bit later in the month, about halfway through the month is when earnings season quote unquote starts to kick off and um and uh and, and that's when so you could see that usually triggers that that triggers news that usually moves the market so um we could see the market kind of move a little bit choppy a little bit more sideways until then we might see a couple weeks of that doesn't have to and yeah i didn't think it was going to go straight up the last couple of weeks like it did so um but because it's done that it, it would it would make a little bit of sense if it if it did consolidate those those that move a little bit move a little bit sideways but we'll see um it won't happen if buyers are ready to jump back in on any pullback though um, and what could happen if we go back to the S&P chart real quick is um you know you can see that we're we were in the extreme range. We backed off a little bit. It could be that um, we get dip buyers that buy this dip right here, push it up a little bit further, and then it, it gets a little bit more sideways, especially if it gets back up to this area up here where it's moved sideways several times in this area as, it, it, as it's kind of consolidating things. I can see uh, those last few buyers pushing it up into that point, maybe over a couple of days, and then you get a couple of weeks where you're sideways until earnings start coming out. Maybe earnings and earnings then either propel you pro propel you to new all-time highs, or we get a larger correction at that point that, that pulls things back a little bit. So, all right, let's quickly go through. I don't want to go through a, a ton of other charts, but uh, you know, bond market has been one that's been in the news a lot. Not much has changed since uh, Tuesday. We're just kind of, you know, rallying a little bit, but moving a little bit sideways through here. This is the area I thought was a key area of a, of a potential trend reversal, if we, if we might be seeing a trend reversal in bonds. 
remember, you can't know exactly when a trend reversal is going to take place, but what you look for is little clues. Um, if, if we're now, that would put us at a higher high. We've had lower highs, lower lows all through here. And um, that would be kind of a first signal of possibly reversing. Then you'd look, look to see if it pulls back and gives you a higher low as well. And obviously that would be acting like an uptrend at that point. But I also would pay attention to how it moves up above there. If if uh, if if it just keeps going straight up over the next few days and breaks out above there, where this is looking more impulsive. Um, that would be a stronger sign of a, of a potential trend reversal. If it's chopping back and forth, though, if it comes down a little bit here and and then it breaks out above there, I don't know that I would really put a lot of weight into that being a, a trend reversal because this would be looking more corrective, and that's what you see in the downtrend. You see impulsive. This is more corrective, more back and forth, impulsive. And um, if this was a little bit more showing a little bit more back and forth, even if it broke up above there, it would probably be more likely that you're going to continue that downtrend at some point. Bottom line is it's still acting like a downtrend, so we're going to assume it's going to continue to move lower. Um, gold has come up a little bit uh, off of that. Remember, I showed you it had that bullish reversal candle on Tuesday. If you remember, I said there's a good chance that, that we see gold. Um, off of that, it should move up a little bit. It's a very short-term, candlesticks are very short-term indicators of price, but, um, you know, they do, they do uh, sometimes at times show you a pretty high probability of a move. They're not going to tell you how, how far that move is going to go necessarily, but uh, we can see that that bullish reversal we saw on Tuesday did, did lead to a, a rise in the gold, uh, in gold. Same with oil. The oil came back down again today. I think it back, came back down <clears throat> A little bit with the, the just before we got on, or as we were getting on, started with the class. The president came on talking about uh, some policy moves to increase oil supply, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, that's going to have an impact if, if supply increases. That's going to have an impact on on oil going higher. Uh, a lot of this reversal happened just just uh, recently there, but we did have a bullish reversal candle. Did get follow through and go higher yesterday off of that. Um, We'll have to see how uh, that message today impacts the oil and oil stocks. Um, uh, you know, one thing to keep an eye on, and, and again, I keep reminding everyone of this, but it's important that you realize this, is that uh, it, it, sometimes we think of the oil reserve, oil markets as, as, oh, we need to increase supply. It's almost like you go over to, you feel like you go over to the faucet, turn on the faucet, and it increases the supply. When you need to cut back the supply, you go and turn the faucet off. Or it, it's, it's, In other words, we, we have this simplistic approach of how it works, thinking that it's going to be immediate or very quick, and it's not that way. Um, if we're going to increase oil supplies, it could take months to do that. If we're going to decrease oil supplies, it, it'll, it'll take uh, a long period of time to do that as well. So these things don't move that quickly. Although, again, it is important to realize markets are, or traders are forward looking. So if they do believe that supplies will increase, um, they, they'll tend to trade that way, expecting uh, what they think the price will do down the road. And it doesn't necessarily mean that prices are going to come down because uh, there could be other factors that um, that, that could uh, uh, increase demand um, on oil and, and beyond what what additional supply could be. So um, I'd love oil to come back down just because I um, hate filling up my my car, uh, paying all that extra money for gas. Um, but as a trader, if I'm trading all the stocks, I want them to go up. And so there's a little bit of a conflict there sometimes because I do have oil stocks that I'm, I'm trading. Uh, but anyway, um, that's something to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, you know, another thing to point out is anytime you hear any president talk about um, taking supply out of the, the strategic uh, reserve, uh, to bring down oil prices, it never works because there's not enough oil to really impact 
the, the price from those reserves. So it's usually just a political statement. It makes it look like any president's trying to do something, but rarely does it really have an effect on um, on the, on the supply, at least in any meaningful way. All right, um, the dollar uh, last uh, we we talked about this on uh, Tuesday it had come back it had a big move down on Tuesday, but it came down to this this bottom part of the range right there. Um, I felt like, you know, a lot of times when you have this real sideways range, um, you'll see a, a you'll see a stock before it usually means it's going to go higher or it's going to continue higher, continue that uptrend. But sometimes you'll see it dip down below the support of that range before moving higher. And that might have been what happened yesterday, although that wasn't a very big dip down, but it did drop down a little bit, had a bullish reversal candle and um, moved up again today by the way just because you have a bullish reversal this is a bullish reversal candle we opened down here we closed up here after this drop still managed to go a little bit lower the next day so just because you have a bullish or a bearish reversal candle doesn't mean that that uh, you're going to get the move it's it's showing you it, it or it could mean it's coming it could mean it's early and it might, this might have been showing you that, that you're near a bottom this is another bullish reversal candle. So you have two bullish reversal candles in a row, and then you're now you're moving up. Maybe this leads to a, a rally higher from that point. But um, it's just another reminder that none of these candle formations are perfect or exact, and you don't ever want to bet everything on on uh, any one of these patterns, uh, expecting that they they have to work or they're going to work. But overall, this looks like a correction. Previous move was up. We would expect the trend of the dollar to continue to move higher, based on that. VIX for the first time, we're seeing a, a move higher today, which again, that's what you would expect. Market's down, VIX should be up. It's not a huge move, so again, I'm not seeing panic. It's just, um, you know, we've had this big rally. We're pulling back a little bit. You, you would expect professional traders to start hedging a little bit um, uh, in case it, it does lead to a bigger, a bigger drop. Um, but again, there's, a, and, and this is something I, I pointed out earlier as well, that remember the VIX is not telling us something significant every single day. Um, really, when, when you're drawing significant conclusions from the VIX, it's when it's moving in the same direction as the S&P 500, or if it's moving in a larger, um, making a larger move than, than the index uh, proportionally. Um, and I'm not seeing that at all today. So all it's doing is confirming that uh, you know, the market's down a little bit, fixes up a little bit, but it is, I guess it's significant the fact that it's the first time in, in several weeks that we've had a, an upward move in the VIX, and, and who knows, it, that could change, maybe the market rallies into the close of the day and the VIX looks different at the close, but if it does hold right here, that'd be the first um, uh, upward move, or decent upward move we've seen in the VIX for a couple weeks, and um, and maybe that means, you know, we get, get a little bit of a, a bigger pullback here, or not a big pullback, but, a, you know, a little bit of a deeper pullback. All right, um, chip stocks. Now, I would say that chip stocks are down a bigger percentage than the market. Uh, that would concern me a little bit. But again, I, I don't want to draw too much uh, of a conclusion or draw too much, put too much emphasis on it. It's it's not showing anything dramatically different that that would indicate um, that that we're going to see a bigger pullback. Um, again, typically we're we're comparing the chip stocks to the NASDAQ 100, uh, chip stocks tend to be uh, more of a leading indicator of that index. And, um, but uh, yeah, not, not too big of a deal here. Transportation stocks down a little bit. Bitcoin's down a little bit too, although it had a pretty good run over the last uh, week and a half. So that's, that's be kind of expected a little bit. All right. So overall, um, you know, obviously trend is up. Uh, we're not extremely overbought. So, you know, we, we, we do want to look for stocks that we can get into. This is a time when we can uh, get into positions and, and we still have to manage them, but we can, we can increase um, the port our portfolio if we want. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like to do though, is, you know, you had this big run up. I talked a little bit about this on Tuesday, but you had this big run up right here. It's unusual. 
and we didn't really couldn't really tell that the trend was was turning until we were in the later stages of it. <clears throat> so you know, the, you know, I've been cautious about adding too much into the portfolio right here because you're getting into a spot where you're more likely to pull back a little bit. And if I know that stocks are going to pull back a little bit, I could get a better price on them. You know, I don't want to be low. I don't want to have all my money invested. Um, right at the right at an area where I think could be the top of an initial move. Ideally, if you get a pullback, especially if it's a little bit of a, a, a decent pullback that came back into this area here or something like that, that and then, and then gave you a bullish reversal sign or something like that, that would be an area where I would I'd want to lo start loading up because now you have the, the trend uh, acting like an uptrend turning. You, you have your first correction coming back down and um, that next move tends to be the biggest move. Um, if you're familiar with Elliott Wave, and if you're not, there's trainings on it to go to the Traders Pro channel on YouTube. Subscribe, you can you can get that training. But in advancing moves, there there's there tends to be they tends to move in five waves. You'll get the initial wave, wave one. The first pullback is wave two. And you get wave three, wave four, wave five. And typically, it doesn't have to be, but typically wave three is your largest wave. It's your it's your your biggest move that you end that you usually get. Um, the the ru Elliott wave rule that's associated with this is that wave three can't be the smallest wave. <coughs> But most of the time, it is the, the the biggest wave. So now you could make the argument, though, here, having looking looking back on this, that maybe this is wave three. This this might have been the bottom right here. This could have been wave one. That could have been wave two. And this is wave three. But even if that's the case, this would be wave four, and then you you should get a move up for wave five. Um, but that would be where. You know, this it, on the pullback right here is where you want to be getting more aggressive. After that pullback is where you want to be more aggressive in trading that that last move up, potentially that last move up there. So anyway, that would be the reasoning behind that. All right, let's take a look at uh, now. Traditionally, especially if you're new, I I don't cover this every week, but um, the process that you typically want to go through is you want to look at the market condition. And that's what we just got done doing. Um, we want to know what type of uh, trend we're dealing with. If if, the, if we got through all that analysis and, and the conclusion was, man, this market is in a downtrend, we're going lower, it's acting like it wants to go lower, then obviously you don't want to be jumping into, you don't want to be buying anything, really, right? Um, um, now, if we would have gone through all that analysis and we came to the conclusion that, boy, it could go either way, I could see there's some arguments that it could go higher, there's some arguments that it could go lower, um, well, then it doesn't mean you can't get into some new trades, right? Because if, if you've got a market that's not really telling you its direction, but you see a stock that's saying, boy, it should go up, um, could you go add that to your portfolio? Yeah. But because you have this conflicting market condition, you don't want it to be loading up. I don't want to be getting into 20 trades um, in that in, in that environment, right? Um, so the first step is to kind of determine your market environment. And right now, the market is acting like it wants to go up, okay? Uh, the next step then is to go to the sector tab right here. And this is going to show you which sectors are outperforming the market. Which sectors are the strongest sectors right now? And it'll rank them right here. Now, doesn't mean that you have to focus your trades on the top sectors. You know, maybe you're like, okay, the market's going to go up, and I like tech stocks, and I, I want to go into computer and technology. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. Okay. Um, and you can find a, a nice, strong, trending computer technology stock. Um, but the philosophy here is if you're trying to keep the approach really simple, you're not trying to 
outsmart the market. Um, you're, you're recognizing the trend is up and then you're going to the strong, you're going to try to focus on the stronger sectors within that, that trend. So obviously oil has been outperforming. It's right at the top. Now you could go in and see how many of those stocks are, have buy signals right now. Um, but the, what I like to do is I like to I like to go in and look at stocks that have hold signals right now that that have a high um, um, strength rank, and I'll talk about that here in just a second. And then I put them in a watch list and wait for them to go from hold to buy. So you know if I'm if I'm kind of anticipating or want to anticipate when a stock is going to go go to a buy signal, and I want to get in right when it goes to a buy signal. Uh, that's that's how this approach would work. But again, I have no problem if someone wants to buy something right now, they go right to the buy signal and find something. Now the problem sometimes though is by the time some of these stocks will have a buy signal. So you might, you know, the reason why I like to go into the hold signals is some, some there's a reason why it's at a hold and usually it's because it pulled back a little bit, right? So that's the idea is that maybe you're kept coming back on one of these pullbacks and, and as soon as it goes to a buy signal, you're getting in and you're getting in in the early part of that move. Um, if you just go to the buy, ones that have buy signals, you might find a stock that has, has had a buy signal for two weeks now and it's been, you can see it's trending up, but you might be getting in right when it is about to go back into one of these pullbacks. That's that's kind of the danger there. So um, again, I'm not saying you can't do it. You might want to look at the chart because maybe maybe you are early in it. Maybe it's been a buy signal for three days, but you're still just coming off out of this correction right here, and there's still room to run. Um, and and you'll see me do that sometimes in the stock specific class. Here, I'll I'll look under the buys and see if there's any of these that are just barely went to a buy signal, but they're boy they're really nice patterns. Um, because I don't like to miss good patterns. And so if I have time, you know, I'll go and, and look. If you don't have a lot of time, then, then the process is you want to go to the hold section right here. Now, these are major sectors right here. You can break them down into more, you can see the more specific uh, areas. Maybe you want to deal with uh, oil service stocks. Well, if you click this little plus button right by the sector, And I know some of you, this, you already know all this. I'm just trying to direct this. I do this occasionally because I get a lot of new people over time and want to make sure that they are aware of some of the stuff. Um, and it keeps the class from being the exact same every week. But uh, if you click on that, it'll show different breakdowns within the in the uh, in the in the oil overall oil sector. Maybe you want to or energy sector. It's kind of the whole oils and energy. Maybe you want to focus on solar stocks. Or biofuels, or you know, here's some of the service uh, stocks, and you know, it shows you how many of those stocks have buy signals, how many or have hold and sell signals, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, the if you just st stay focused on the main um, sector, if I click on hold, it, it's going to find any of the stocks in any of those sectors, any of those uh, smaller sectors that have high strength rank and, and have a hold signal, you know, so, you know, these, these could be in any of those different subsectors, so to speak. And if you don't care, if you just want, I just want oil stocks. Okay. Well, these are the, these are the top oil stocks. These are the oil stocks that have the highest strength rank and that currently have a hold signal. Now we get to this point, what you're typically, what you're looking for, a starting point is you want to see if you can find a stock, with a 98 strength rank that currently has a hold signal and you want to wait for it to go from hold to buy. So you're, you know, obviously 98 or above, you can do a hundred strength rank. Although a lot of times a hundred strength ranks, sometimes you'll find those are maybe nearing a little bit more near the end of their trend. Um, and, and so that's why you, you try to find around 98 to, is kind of a sweet spot there. Now you may look at all the 98s and you don't see anything you like. Um, 
and that's fine. If you don't see any charts that you like, then then you can start to move down. You can go look at the 97. I usually don't like to go below 90, though, if I can avoid it. Uh, now, there are exceptions to that sometimes. If, if um, Well, part of that, what could be the exception to that is that some sectors themselves just don't have high strength ranks. You know, you look at some of the construction stocks, you might go into the hold section, the highest one in the hold section is an 87 strength range. Well, typically those construction stocks don't have high strength ranks. Um, even if you look at the buy section, they're, they're, you're not going to find too many that are in the 90s. So, um, you know, you can obviously in that case, um, you know, 87 would be a high strength rank within that particular sector. And that kind of comes with just doing this a lot. You'll you'll get to recognize which sectors are like that, that, that typically don't have real high strength ranks. And so there's a little bit of a relativity to this. It's, it's relative. Um, uh, so just be aware of that. The bottom line is you don't want to be, don't get too caught up in exactness in anything. You know, you don't want to, there is no exact formula that's going to, cause you to never lose money okay uh there's no buy signal sell signal approach that can cause you to never lose money if, if you're if you never want to lose money don't trade because it's impossible impossible to not lose money at time and again the key is to make more money than you lose but it'd be like it'd be like trying to be a professional basketball player and you never want the other team to ever score and if they do score you're a failure and you don't want to ever have that happen. Well, name me one professional basketball game where the opponent never scored. It never happened. So your expectation is so unrealistic. You shouldn't even be in it. Then if that's your expectation, don't play basketball because you're going to drive yourself crazy expecting the, the, um, the impossible. And that's same with trading here. So we can, we can, you know, be a little bit flexible on that, that strength rank range, but typically I don't try to, I don't like to go down below 90 unless there's a really good chart pattern there that, uh, that uh, I don't want to miss. So uh, if we go down to 98 strength rank, here's our 98 strength rank right around here. And, um, Actually, I did like this one right at the very top that did have 99 strength rank, but I did like HPK right here. Let's take a look at that one first. Let's switch, switch all the signals there. Oh, this looks like it's – now, remember, the system updates overnight, so uh, – or after the market closes. So everything that had a hold signal yesterday – is is going to be and a 90 high strength rank is going to be in that list see it, it it's showing a buy signal right now uh now that could change between now and the market close it could drop and then go back to a hold by the time the market closes but if it stays like that then when the system updates overnight this will now show that this has a buy signal and that will move it you know we're, we're looking under the hold range we're looking under the hold range here. It'll move it into the buy range. It'll, it'll overnight. If that holds, that stock will move into the buy area overnight here when it updates. Um, now, if you're waiting, if that's your system is to wait for it to go from hold to buy. Um, hold on here. Uh, you're waiting for it to go from hold to buy. Um, and you're right at the end of the day, and it looks like it's going to be a buy signal, then you could, you saw it earlier, you could go ahead and get in if you wanted to, because um, it's giving you that that uh, signal to get in. What I like about this, though, is it's a lot of oil stocks look like this, though. They had that sharp sell-off. They came right roaring right back, and then they've been moving a little bit sideways right here. Okay. Um, now, typically, stocks will alternate between impulsive and corrective. They'll have these impulsive moves or these trending moves and they'll, the corrective moves are more choppy, more sideways. When you get into a trend reversal, very often you'll get an impulsive up, impulsive down, and then you'll get corrective and it'll stair step its way down. Well, that's not what happened here. We had impulsive up, we had impulsive down, so it looked like a potential trend reversal, but then we had impulsive up again. 
but now we're getting corrective. And since stocks tend to alternate between impulsive and corrective, I would assume that when this sideways move is done, that the next move should be up. Again, you can't know that for sure, but these are just basic trend fundamentals. This stock could drop straight down and at that point, now you'd say, okay, well, it didn't go up. This is an impulsive move down. Then I would assume that we're now trending down or there's a higher probability that we're trending. We're going to stair step our way down. But the way it's acting right now, and that's the best we can do, impulsive up, corrective, there's a higher probability that it would move up after that sideways move is done. And if it does, it should get back up to this previous high. That would be a target area that you would expect to at least get to. Now, you may not, I'm not saying you just get out right there, but uh, that would be a target area you would expect it to get to and then hopefully continue higher at that point. But I like that pattern. Now, now usually you're already at a hold signal and you're waiting for it to go to buy. If that was the case here, I could put it in my watch list. So. Right here is the watch list, and, and this little green button is to add it to your watch list. You click on that little green button right there. And I don't have time to teach you how to set up your watch list. There is a training on that, though, on that YouTube channel if you want to look up how to set up watch lists on there. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in the stock-specific class watch list. And then I want to click on save and go to watch list. And here's where it shows up right down here. And then I'm going to come all the way over here to this little box right here. Now this little box is the alert. Um, what I want to do there is click on that box and it, I want it to send me an email when the signal changes from hold to buy. Click save. And because it's going to, it's going to show that overnight here, I'm going to get an email tonight when the system updates is going to say, Hey, the stock went from hold to buy. At least if it stays that way into the close, that buy signal stays that way into the close. It'll send me that email telling me it's gone from hold to buy. I can see that email. And so when you're when you're putting these in your watches, you don't have to look at them every day to see if they go from hold to buy. It'll tell you, and then you can go ahead and get in the next day. All right. Question: What does a buy signal with a short term down mean? It means that the short term trend is is uh, is still considered down, um, but the signal the the signal to buy the algorithm to buy is triggering the buy signal. You'll see that a lot of times when it, when you're coming out of um, a correction like this or in a correction like this. Uh, let me go pull that stock again here. Is it's is it's kind of consolidated right here. It probably dipped down below the the um, uh, short term uh, trend. Actually, short term trend is showing up. Yeah, the SC trend is up. But sometimes you could, if you you could have a situation where it it it, it could it's possible it could I think it's possible it could trigger a buy signal even if the the short term trend was down a little bit, but it'd probably be very close. All right, let's go look for another one here. Uh, I'll speed things up a little bit. I just want to slow it down for those that were new. Um, Another one, Arch Resources down here, 98 strength rank. So this one still has a hold signal, but um, I like I like the chart pattern here. You have this this sharp uptrend right here. This looks like wave A, wave B, wave C. It looks like an ABC correction. By the way, if you don't know what ABC patterns are, I have a training on that. There, go to the YouTube channel. Um, 
there's months, months worth of trainings in there that you can, so as much time as you have and want to, want to put in, you have, you've got tons of trainings in there that you can go through. Um, now the trainings, I did those trainings um, on the back half of some of these updates. So you might have to fast forward for the first half hour or so to get to the training part. Um, but they're, they're all there and they're, they're titled so that you can see what their, the training is about, what it's on. And, um, so I have a whole, tra- I, have a, I think it's, I have a couple trainings on ABC patterns, but I, I talk about what they are and how to recognize them. But the bottom line is it looks like this is in a correction or a, a consolidation right through here. And when that's done, it should continue the uptrend. It should continue that trend. And so now all we're waiting for is waiting for this to go from hold to buy um, as the signal to get in. Now, do you have to get in only when it goes to a buy signal? No, there you could. There's other techniques you could use, um, entry techniques you could use. Um, I, and then, like I said, I've got I cover some of those different types of techniques and some of those trainings. So we can go ahead and put this one in the watch list too. Um, I'm just going to put it in there and, and move on. Another one is this MBO, uh, 98 strength rank. Again, very similar pattern here. All the oil stocks had the sharp sell-off, sharp move up. Since then, it's been kind of consolidating into here. You could you could put this one in there, see, look to get in if it goes back to a buy signal. Had a bullish reversal day Tuesday, as did almost everything. All the all, all these stocks have, seem to have have had that bullish reversal candle on Tuesday. Um, now, with this announcement. By the president today, could this put a little bit of pressure on oil stocks? Oh, well, that'd be a reason to wait for it to go back to a buy signal. Is that if it if if it starts dropping, if this stock starts dropping over the next few days, then you never got the signal anyway, right? You never you never got the buy. And let's say it drops all the way down and it changes this whole pattern. Well, you never got the signal to get in. So what do you care? Um, but if it does move up and goes to a buy signal, then it gives you that confirmation and that could give you a little bit more confidence that it's going to go higher there. So we'll put this one in the watch list. By the way, I booted a lot of stocks out of the watch list just to clean things up a little bit. So that's why I can add a, add a few more. Um, uh, right, this there's BET right here, Vermilion Energy, 98 strength rank. Probably going to see a similar pattern, a little bit different pattern here. But again, that looks like maybe wave A, wave B, wave maybe it's working on wave C right here. But I, I like the sideways movement after this nice run up. Wait for this thing to go back to a buy signal. Or, you know, another entry technique is you could wait for it to break out above here. That's a little bit extra confirmation. It, it'd probably go back to a buy signal before that. But if you can recognize that, hey, this is a, a key resistance area right here. I, I don't want to get in this thing and then have it bump, come back down off of that area. You could wait for it to break out and buy the breakout. Now there's a cost to that. You you wouldn't you, you know you're getting in at a higher price, but you'd be you'd be getting strong. There's a stronger probability at that point that it would go higher if it if it breaks out. So you have to weigh that sometimes. You weigh paying a little bit more for the stock, but you get a stronger chance it's going to go up, or do you take a little bit more of a chance, a little bit lower price, but a little bit more of a risk, a little bit a little bit less confirmation. This is what every trader has to deal with is weighing weighing those decisions, you know, make a little bit more money, but it's a little bit more risk. Um, and the, some of that can depend on the market environment. If you're in a really strong uptrend, I don't need a lot of confirmation. The whole market is going higher. If you're in a more of a market that's indecisive and going back and forth, you might say, yeah, maybe that extra confirmation would be wise right here. That's how I tend to do it is, is when I, when I'm trying to decide what, 
you know, when to take on a little bit more risk or when to look for more confirmation. Usually it, it has to do with what the market conditions are like. How do you do that? Well, join me every week. That's, I show you the process over and over and over again of how to analyze the, the market trends and, and uh, determine when, when you're in an ideal uh, condition. All right, um, let's move into another sector. Well, actually, wait, I did put a, I'm gonna put that one in the watch list real quick before I forget. Now, I don't like utility stocks. They, unless you're trying to just capture high dividends and that's, they just don't move very much. So from a trading standpoint, I don't tend to focus very much on utility stocks. That's why you see me skip that a lot. Um, but that's just me. Um, and, you know, if you're really looking for high dividend paying stocks, those are typically your higher dividend paying stocks and you can go focus on some of those. I'm going to skip over to transport transportation stocks here. And now this one at the very top, 98 strength rank, GRIN. It looks like it's going to go, might go to a buy signal today. Kind of hold, but it's had this little pullback right here. It's starting to move higher again. Back here, it kind of did the same thing where it had a sharp sell off right here and then just kind of kept working its way higher. Looks like it's, it's repeating that same process here. Let's go ahead and add that one to the watch list. And then, you know, I'd like the aerospace sector. I've talked about this a number of times. Um, Northrop Grumman. Now again, look at this. You can see that there there are not high strength rank stocks in this sector. There typically aren't. In fact, if we go into the holds or into the buys, you'll probably find the same thing. So only one stock in the aerospace industry has a 90 above 90 strength rank. It's only 92. So if I get if I'm going to apply a strict approach to this and say oh it's got to be a 98 strength range, you're never going to trade any aerospace stocks, right? So um, what I I see a lot in the 80s though, right? So maybe I drop it down and say okay, from a relative standpoint, an 80 strength rank on an aerospace stock is probably pretty good. So you might say okay, I'm going to focus on on these these are the upper range though of that hold section so these these would be if i can find good patterns in those uh, you look at northrop grumman here noc and this little pullback right here started to move up on again on tuesday we had this bullish reversal candle it dropped suddenly had a drop on monday and then gap down right here but had a bullish reversal so maybe that's done. Maybe that pull, maybe that's the pullback right here, and this is going to start working its way higher, and you can wait for it to go back to a buy signal. By the way, just because it goes from hold to buy doesn't mean it always goes right up from there. Here, here was the, it went to a buy signal and it came right back down. So that's why a lot of times if I if I buy on the buy signal, a lot of times I, I want to put a stop loss right below the last low at that point. So if I if I got if I wanted to get in on that buy signal, I might look at this previous low right here and put my stop down below there. You always want to put your stop loss at a point where you know you're probably wrong, and, and that would definitely be a spot where I know I'm wrong. Um, if it were to come all the way back down and go below there, I'm, well, obviously it's I'm not trending up at that point. Go ahead and take your loss. Now we we have a bullish reversal candle right here and a higher low right here. So if we went back to a buy signal, then I'd probably put my stop right below there. It, again, there's you can have different stop loss places too. If you, if you wanted to give it a lot more room to to move around and go higher, you could still keep it down below there, 
or here's the breakout area right here. It broke out, came back to it. I could get it down below that breakout area, put a stop down below there. There's no perfect place, but obviously if I have a lower stop, there's more risk I, I'm taking on the trade. I could lose more money if I'm wrong. And you have to consider that as part of your decision. Um, let's do one more under, let's go down to computer technology. That's the next one lower here. I did skip over finance, um, which is fine. You can, you know, you don't see any patterns you like in those, in those groups. You can just keep moving down the list. This is one we did last. We've done, I think, a couple updates, but I, I still like it as Datadog right here, 94 strength rank. So we're down a little bit lower, but I like the pattern on this. And I think I liked it from the long term. If you look at a longer term chart, you can see this big consolidation through here broke out. And it's, this looks like it's just been kind of pulling back. It's right at that breakout area right here. And so I'm assuming it's not going to go any lower. If it goes back to a buy signal, then I'd probably get a stop right below here. Because that's where I know I'd be wrong. And then hopefully it starts taking off on another move like this. All right. That's all I have. Hopefully that was helpful. I know for those that already are familiar with some of the stuff, it was probably a little bit boring today because you already know that. But uh, this is kind of geared towards some of you brand new uh, people joining that have been confused in the other classes because you didn't know the process, what the process is I'm following on, on, uh, on some of these. Um, but hopefully that helped a little bit. All right. Have a great uh, weekend, and uh, we'll see you on Tuesday for the market update class. Bye, everyone.